So here in the lab is a uh, typical setup that I use quite often to test antennas here in the lab. At the moment I've got it connected up to the spectrum analyzer but I use the same uh, test uh, rig here to uh, test VSWR etc on the network analyzer. So I was thinking of building something a little bit more rigid and permanent. Now what I have got is a uh, box full of uh, rigid coax and I was thinking of making a jig up uh, that I can use to connect the spectrum analyzer or the network analyzer and it'll be a lot more rigid and support this so uh, it's not uh, just wobbling around on the bench and of course the uh, rigid coax that I've got is a lot more um, you know more professional than this stuff this stuff's a little bit lossy and especially on the network analyzer I have to compensate for the loss in this coax but uh, the uh, rigid coax that I've got is uh, quite good stuff and I got a box of it pretty cheap so I was thinking of making uh, a jig or a rig up as I say because this is just typical of what I use on a daily basis when testing antennas so I can use it on the uh, spectrum analyzer or can connect up one of these detectors and measure the VSWR for instance on the network analyzer. So let's get over to the bench then and we'll take a look at what we've got to work with the rigid coax and uh, let's see what we can come up with. So to form the basis of the jig I'm going to use this rigid coax that I picked up. I uh, picked up a box of this stuff and uh, I picked it up pretty cheap and the seller told me it's rated up to 18 gigahertz and uh, more importantly it's uh, 50 ohms rigid coax which is what we need and uh, 18 gigahertz is far more than what I work with at the present so it should be more than capable of handling the uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz that I use. Now the biggest problem that I've got with this stuff is I can't bend it I don't have the tools to put uh, any bends in this so I've got to choose pieces that are already bent to the uh, kind of shape that I'm already looking for. So I think this piece here I'm going to use for the feed from the uh, sweep generator into the uh, input on the uh, SWR bridge or the uh, directional bridge that I'll be using and uh, this will connect up to the sweep generator and then feed in along this bend and then we can put our uh, directional coupler on here so we can then do our SWR measurements. And then I can just find a straight piece like this piece here, cut it to the length that I want and then we can have that feed going in from the uh, directional coupler or the uh, VSWR bridge into the spectrum analyzer itself. So what I'm hoping for then is with both of these connected to the uh, directional coupler or the VSWR bridge it's going to be more than strong enough to support that and the antenna that I'm testing just uh, by using the uh, rigid coax alone because it is pretty strong stuff this. Now as for the connectors what I'm going to need are two N-type connectors and two SMA connectors. Now to purchase the uh, specific N connectors and SMA connectors that will so normally solder onto this kind of diameter uh, rigid coax here is just going to be too expensive. I can't pick them up cheap but uh, I've got two of these N connectors and these are designed to uh, fit over the top of some uh, LMR 195 I believe or maybe a little bit bigger coax and it's got these uh, little uh, you know uh, nuts to actually tighten them down onto there so what I'm going to do is modify this slightly I'm going to drill out the diameter of the hole on the uh, locking nut here and also this little sleeve that uh, would normally goes around the coax so I can fit it on there solder it in place and then uh, fit this on over the top of the coax and then clamp it down so hopefully I'll be able to make one of these fit no problem now as for the SMA connectors all I've got are these ones here that uh, would normally solder onto the semi-rigid coax that you've seen me use before here in the lab but the diameter of this is just slightly smaller than the diameter of the rigid coax here the outer sleeve so what I'm hoping to do is to cut away some of that dielectric there and then hopefully this will fit just on the inside and then I can solder it up around the uh, lip here so hopefully that will give me a good connection on the semi-rigid coax for the SMA connector. So I've drilled the diameter of this nut a little wider so it now fits 
over the top of the semi-rigid coax there but I just wanted to show you this this is the uh, little flange that goes over the top of uh, what normally would be uh, normal standard coax so it would fit over the top of the coax and then the uh, outer braid will be um, cut away cut short and then bent over the top of this lip here and then this little uh, rubber ring as an insulator would go over the top there just to uh, stop the outer braid grounding to parts that you don't want it to ground to and then uh, that uh, outer braid will hold this in position and then the nut will come in and screw it all down nice and tight but what I'm going to have to do is solder this into position on the semi-rigid coax there and uh, I'm just looking at this material itself and I do believe that this is sterling silver it's uh, not metallic in any way so, and uh, I've already done a little test solder here so solder does stick to it so it's definitely not aluminium but uh, I think this is uh, sterling silver and it's not silver plate I think it's uh, solid sterling silver and I do believe the uh, inner core of this rigid coax as well is uh, sterling silver I did think it would possibly be uh, silver plated uh, copper wire it is really really thick stuff and uh, remember this is supposed to be uh, you know capable of handling up to 18 gigahertz but uh, having just uh, cut this short and you can see the cut line there I also think this is solid sterling silver so the guy who sold me this uh, box of scrap and uh, I think I paid about 10 or 12 pounds for it at a uh, uh, ham fest I went to a couple of years ago now probably didn't realize what he had because uh, I know I know silver is not as expensive as uh, say gold or some other metals but uh, even so the box that he sold me is quite a lot it would possibly uh, have been worthwhile at one time a few years ago anyway stripping this out of the semi-rigid coax and weighing this in on its own it have probably got uh, definitely more than 12 quid for it anyway so I've got that flange soldered onto the coax it was uh, quite simple to do the uh, solder flowed quite nicely around this uh, rigid coax and soldered onto here as I say I do think this is uh, sterling silver but uh, I had to get in there with a grinding tool as well just to get rid of any excess just so the uh, nut uh, sat quite flush on the back there but now what I can do is uh, just place that into the uh, end connector here and tighten this up and then it does a uh, really good job of uh, holding it in place nice and secure because remember this end type connector was originally designed for uh, more traditional coax not to be on this uh, rigid stuff so what I'm going to do now is solder the pin on the end and then uh, this is as good as done so next then I need to cut this a little bit shorter and uh, attach the SMA connector to this so in order to work out where to do that I've got it attached to the uh, sweet generator here this is the main coupler that I uh, tend to use uh, you know the majority of the time so this uh, connection on the coupler needs to be connected directly to the spectrum analyzer so I'm just lining it up by eye and I'll put a little mark here where I need to cut it short and then attach the SMA connector to so I know I'm roughly in the uh, right position there So I've decided to make a few more of these adapters using this uh, rigid coax so I thought I'd uh, zoom in and show you in a little bit more detail how I've uh, decided to come up with the method to attach this to this uh, rigid coax here especially when the rigid coax is a wider diameter than is uh, designed to go in this so I've started off here as you can see I've left a little bit of that uh, inner core there so I can uh, I've got quite a length to play with I don't actually need it that long but uh, I've cut down these uh, slits in the uh, rigid coax itself I've just spaced them out about uh, three millimeters apart four millimeters apart and I've cut down about uh, eight millimeters in depth but uh, what I'm going to do now is pry these back on themselves to open them up a little bit like a flower and then uh, when I've soldered them up I can trim them to the correct size so I can attach them to the uh, outer rim of this SMA connector 
so now that I've got them opened up like that what I'm going to do now is trim the diameter of that uh, dielectric down so it fits up inside the uh, cup on this SMA connector so it will go over the top there and on to the dielectric to give it some support so here's the SMA connector then ready to be permanently soldered in place so I've pre-tinned around the base here of the SMA connector and I've pre-tinned those uh, little slits that I've bent back here so what I'm going to do now is trim away any excess because I want those to lay flush up just under the SMA connector lip here so I'm still able to turn the SMA connector and then uh, flood some more solder all over the uh, top of this and then get in with a blowtorch and get it all to flow together so we've got a really strong connection so I'm now ready to flow some solder in between those little uh, fingers there so I'm going to use a soldering iron just put a little bit more around here and then get the uh, pen blowtorch get it all to flow together and then come in with the Dremel and tidy it all up and get rid of any excess so I've applied some more solder on the top of those fingers there so what I'm going to do now is uh, use the blowtorch apply a little bit of heat start heating it up in this area here and hopefully the uh, heat will travel down the coax and uh, it'll flow all the solder from those fingers and the uh, rim of the SMA connector as well and we'll get a really good connection then So the first two that I made of these I used a uh, crimp on sleeve to push over the top of here and then uh, put a little bit of heat shrink tubing or whatever over that just to protect these but if you do the method that I've just shown you you don't really need to do that I've just come in with the Dremel tidied it up a little bit and I'm going to use some of this uh, copper tape just to wrap around there to tidy it up and then cover it all with some heat shrink tubing so this is the finished coax then the SMA connector is now on there permanently it's really really strong and this is the end connector on the uh, opposite side and again this one is a uh, crimp on end connector type and I did a similar method to attach this one but I did use the sleeve to fasten over the top of uh, the uh, soldering job that I did on this one just to add a little bit more strength because it's a little bit bigger and heavier but uh, that's another finished uh, rigid coax section that I can use on my test setup. So this is the original jig that I built with the objective of uh, supporting this test setup here so I can quickly uh, you know screw antennas on and off and it uh, all supports its own weight within this jig and also utilizing this really good coax it's got such low loss this stuff. And also there's a few more different bits here that I've uh, made up again to uh, build a similar sort of jig to use with the network analyzer as well because I was so impressed with this I've uh, gone ahead and built something similar for the network analyzer and uh, because I've got a few of these uh, lengths I'll probably make a few more uh, little connections up like this uh, in the future but uh, hopefully I've shown you uh, my way of uh, soldering these connectors on here when uh, they're not really supposed to uh, connect to this kind of diameter coax so here's all the adapters that I've uh, made then. I've made a few more than uh, I originally planned to make and I've still got a box of this uh, rigid coax although I'm uh, getting down to just short pieces now left. I don't have any uh, really long pieces. So uh, what I'll probably do is just make uh, some more as I uh, need them as you know different testing different things and different situations if I think uh, you know it's something I uh, do regularly and I can make a uh, particular uh, length of this rigid coax as an adapter to make to make it a little bit more simple then I'll probably make them in the future as well but uh, this uh, rigid coax is uh, extremely good there's hardly any loss with this even over this uh, longer length here there's not a great deal of loss in this at all so it's perfect for a uh, test setup situation so any comments please uh, drop them below and if you uh, enjoyed the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one